Hello, welcome back. There's one more property we need to discuss before we take our assessment and one common error we need to watch out for. The new property is called the symmetric property of equality, and it says if A equals B, then B equals A. So what, how we use that is sometimes we'll end up with a number, let's say 3 equals X, but we're trying to prove that X equals 3. So we're just needing to get the X and the 3 on opposite sides. So if A equals B, then we can switch that and say B equals A. So if 3 equals X, then that means also X equals Three, because again, we're not allowed to just switch anything in a proof without having some sort of reason. We also need to watch out for a common error that when everything cancels out on one side, we remember it doesn't just disappear into thin air like magic, it actually turns into a zero, and I know I've discussed that in some of the videos before. So let's look at a practice problem. I have 4x equals 5x plus 32, and I want to prove that x equals a negative 32. So the first thing I'm going to do is start my proof with my table, my statements column on the left, and my reasons on the right. Always statements on the left and reasons on the right. So then I'm going to start with my first given and my only given in this instance. Given 4x equals 5x plus 32. 4x equals 5x plus 32 and that was given to me. Okay, now a common thing a lot of people have been taught to do is to try to keep their x values positive. So in this case, we might go, well, if my x's are 4x and 5x, then I wanna move the smaller one to try to keep my x's positive. This is something that we tend to do a lot. So I'm going to subtract 4x on both sides so I can keep that x positive. Okay, when I do that, it's real tempting to go, okay, so that cancels out, and then 5x minus 4x is 1x plus 32. I subtract it on both sides of equals, so I used the subtraction property of equality. And then sometimes we go, wait, now what do I do? And Sometimes I see some very creative solutions when you've lost your equal symbol and you don't know where to go from here. But we didn't really use our equal symbol. My equal symbol is right here. Remember 4x minus 4x, if you have four apples and you take away four apples, you're left with zero, right? So it doesn't really cancel out and disappear and go away. It turns in to a zero. That's a real common mistake that we make is sometimes we forget that that really does become a number. It becomes a number zero. Okay, all right, so then moving on, I'm gonna subtract, I wanna get this x by itself, so I'm gonna subtract 32 from both sides to move the 32 over. And when I do that, I get zero minus 32 is a negative 32. Equals x, remember this is really zero. 32 minus 32 is zero, so x plus zero is just x, and what did I do? I subtracted on both sides, so subtraction, property of equality. Okay, now here's my problem. I wasn't trying to prove that negative 32 equals x. I want x equals negative 32. So I just have to switch these around, right? If negative 32 equals x, that means x equals a negative 32. Two, but I have to have something written here, and I can't. I know it's tempting to say prove because I write given for my given, but remember, we never ever put the word prove. So what did I do? I used the new property, my symmetric, because there's symmetry to it, my symmetric property of equality. Okay, so we looked at our new property, where we were just switching things from one side of the equals to the other, and then we're gonna watch out for this error here, where sometimes we forget that it doesn't just cancel out, it actually becomes a zero. The only t thing is sometimes we don't have to write it, but on occasion, if, it's, if everything goes away on one side of the equals, if everything turns into a zero, then we do need to make sure that we write that. Okay, thank you so much for watching.